this is the uh, Illustrator file. So the flag that you had uh, usable here is this section here. This plastic clapper that you see on the outside is not hard to do as far as the graphic. It, it places itself right here. So if you have your flag or you can use the one I've given to you, the only trick is taking a look inside the layers. So when you take a look at the layers, this telescope's down or cascades down. Shows you all the images that are on there. And uh, again, you can hide them from in here as well. Or bring them back, depending on which ones you want to see. So um, what I've given you is a couple, a couple ideas, at least the stars and the stripes down below here that come into this file. So when you take a look, that's the flag that you can work from. Or you can make it make your own. But um, like I said, this is the initial starting point. And uh, all I did was take the flag and change the colors. I put the uh, yellow and the green just so you can see it against the white. And I'll duplicate another one down here just to work with it. <coughs> so I always like to have a duplicate from the original. The uh, warp, if you remember, there's two, uh, two areas to choose from. And effect warp is going to give you these items right here. And if you just pick the flag, it, you're kind of done right there. It gives you the bend. Uh, selection vertical or horizontal clicks it onto that that side and um, I actually just place it right up here for you so here's the uh, graphic just gonna bring it all to the front and take a look at it here so I've tried to make the actual clapper just to just to give it that look to it and the other area for it is the object envelope distort and it says make with warp so it's two locations same place and they show up on top of your screen when you get there so there will be the flag section right there if you keep this set to here hold on a second again. so this part right here is going to give you this curve and I'm just using the arrow key so I can watch on screen what I'm actually doing there click OK and now I have this graphic. If I zoom out again and duplicate this just so I have a copy, I can make that into a symbol. So just coming up at the top in the submenu for symbol, it'll let you make a new uh, symbol here and click OK. And that gives you uh, this part. It's going to, envelope is going to have to expand itself, so it's breaking itself away from that appearance panel so now it becomes that graphic okay this part is still connected and when you go into the appearance panel it'll allow you to see and modify the selection into this section so this is the this is the piece that it has <clears throat> so inside here I can actually uh, take a look so when it's selected you can take inside this section and it'll allow you to double back to that part. So object, <clears throat> here's to start reset with warp or mesh or edit the contents. So it'll give you that section. You can edit what's inside of it or keep it selected. And as far as the shading goes, when you look at the actual flag, there's a little bit of tone on the side there. But uh, these items that have this shadow on this section were made from another uh, copy of this flag. So when this is brought over, you can actually make this under Object Path <clears throat> and Envelope Distort. You can make with uh, the mesh, and this will give you a, a few items as far as how to break this apart. So if I increase or decrease the amount of columns or rows that are on here, that will give me that selection. So I've taken it down pretty low. Take the Direct Selection tool and click on one path and this allows me to adjust this and the points just like using the warp tool allows me to take these handles and adjust this even further than what the presets give me so you can kind of get a little bit more carried away with the with the selections that are here And since I limit it to just a couple, it's not as uh, difficult to manipulate. So 
you can't really shade this. If you take this into Photoshop, you can paint this right over. But there's a way if you go through and put a layer above this, that's the exact shape of this, and then use that as a layer, multiply with the um, transformation of using the colors. So I'm just going to option and duplicate it down here. What you have to do, though, is go to Expand. And what this does is it takes everything off of this warp and just makes it into a shape. And uh, Pathfinder allows you to make it into one solid shape. So when you take a look, that's what the piece is right there. And this will go right on top of this selection. So that's it from the back. Here's some of the pieces cut in. <clears throat> so you can select the two of them with the Align tool, just to help. Or if you think you can uh, align it by eye there, that'll put them right on top of each other so you have that selection. <clears throat> so you can, uh, for example, just change this with a, with a gray, and that'll give you the color on top of it. Here's the fill opacity of gray in the appearance panel. Here's the uh, opacity for this one. It's at 100%. I'm going to put it at multiply, so it allows the color to come through even though it has a gray tone within it. And you can use the gradient tool to uh, edit some of these colors. You can apply a gradient onto it. Here I have a blue and white stripe. So there's a stripe that comes through that happens to have blue and transparent colors just taken from this fading sky uh, color. So all this is is having those pieces adjusted from here. Now the only trouble is this gradient is just a vertical line. You can't adjust the uh, colors too well, but that's, that's giving me that option. And keep in mind, this is all in Illustrator, which is still the vector-based. So I'm just going to put a copy of that one down below. And just to show you, that's the color on top of it. So say I go back to the gray value there. You can go to the Mesh tool. And here it allows you to click and create that shape right there. So <clears throat> here it has the curve. It has one tone. And as long as I keep it on that path, it'll keep them pretty much organized. You don't want to, if you get too many haphazard ones, they jump over and keep a section going across. So now with this gray tone, I can click on this one. And say I just want to click a lighter, lighter value to it. You can see it's opaque. <clears throat> so here's where you have to go into the appearance panel and take a look at this, at the opacity of this. Oops, there we go. So now you can see that it's at 100% or you can minimize this down a little bit. If you, that's just for that one color, but if you take the selection tool and select it <clears throat> and go into the opacity, this takes the entire piece and now I just go to multiply and multiply is similar in Photoshop, lets the colors beneath come through. And now with the direct selection tool I can go through and select these and say if I just put uh, Make sure I just get one of these selected. Direct selection tool. And there it builds that up. So I can come back into these. And right now I'm just using shades of uh, the dark value here. And here, now if I wanted to select all of these, I can select it like that. And it changes that whole area. And you have the lasso selection tool, which allows you to climb through here and grab just a few of those points and build it up with these values like that. So this is a pretty nice uh, section. If you see that you want to put another tone right here, go to the right in the toolbox there, hit the mesh tool, and it'll put a strip right across the top there. I can take the direct selection tool, select all of those, and make that a darker value that goes along there. So you can kind of use the uh, mesh tool to set up the grid a little more following the contours and then go back in and highlight and change this. So here's the section here. I'm going to click here and it'll go closer. And that gives me another row with the direct selection tool. I've highlighted all of these now and can make that darker. So it kind of starts to blend uh, a little closer to that end. Gives you a little more control over that section.
Now that's just a gray color over the top of the flag. And just remember that one of these is just a shape on top of it. It's multiplied, so it lets it come through. And then it uh, starts to build that up. If it gets too um, close in here, so I click on this, it makes a strip right in there. And you could, before you'd have to click on each point with the shift key, which you can do. Or you can use the direct select one. And that gives me that, that selection. So it really gets pretty dark depending on how far I want to take it. And say I just want to lighten this one up so you can kind of bring a little bit of light back in there. So you have to experiment with it, but you can see you get a little more control over it, of it with that. So that's all from just the flat graphic of the flag. And then real quickly, if you come back up to this section, <clears throat> trying to simulate this uh, cloud here. Here's the graphic on top which is the symbol idea. Here's this piece that's just made from a few selections here. So if I wanted to select all of these pieces, there it is selected. I have the photograph, so I have to shift key to take that off and same with the, same with the flag. So these are all together. Just go to the Pathfinder, make it a solid. It's gray, no, no stroke on there. And here I can just go to Effect 3D and extrude. I didn't get all of the, the detail in there, but just a little bit. And more options for the lighting. And it gives me that selection. And you can see some of this is slightly curved, so you could go through <coughs> and right up at the top to bevel, you can come down and click on the rounded part, and that'll round some of this off. But um, you just keep it straight for, for now, and just go to the map art. And it's got 30, it already has plenty of uh, images on there. So let's see if it's got these selections. So you can see there's a lot of facades on this, so it makes it a little difficult to take a look at. I think I got that flag in there. <laughs> so you'd have to reconnoiter where you're at on this one. So let's see if that's going to give me that flag. So there's the flag on that selection onto that piece. Just turn it on up in that way. And you click OK. So it gives you a little bit of a three dimensional look to it. But again, coming back into this selection here. Gives you that piece.